Last video, we talked about the Crusades and the Reconquista, two events that greatly shaped the attitudes and mindset of medieval and modern Europeans and Middle Easterners, and it was a fairly well-balanced video in my opinion, only I did see one comment popping up a lot with criticism that I really can't shake off. Where is Portugal? What about Portugal? I can't believe you forgot about Portugal. And they're absolutely right. In associating the Reconquista with a Castilian or Spanish movement, I completely neglected to mention how Portugal also simultaneously emerged from practically nothing to become not only a major European power, but a global power as well, being able to compete with the likes of the Spanish, English, Dutch, French, and despite their small size, Portuguese is now spoken by nearly 5% of the Earth's population. Portuguese explorers were some of the first to venture south of Europe, mapping out the West African coast, and later exploring as far as India and the East Indies, with Ferdinand Magellan being the first explorer to fully circumnavigate the globe. And the Portuguese Empire expanded exponentially to cover nearly every continent on Earth, with the crown jewel of the Portuguese Empire long being their South American colony of Aruba. Nah, I'm just kidding. Obviously, we're talking about Brazil, the largest country in South America and Latin America, with a population about two-thirds that of the United States, and a land area even closer than that, considered by many economists to be a potential superpower in the upcoming years. However, a lot of Americans and those around the world are a bit confused on just who the average Brazilian is, and Brazilians are certainly very loud and proud and boasting of their extremely rich and diverse heritage. Many of you might know from watching some of my earlier videos that Latin America has one of the most unique landscapes on the planet when it comes to immigration, genetics, and racial identification. Latin America has had a large influx of Japanese farmers, Lebanese merchants, Jamaican construction workers, Croatian fishermen, even Confederate soldiers, all topics we've discussed in depth in the past. And although some Latin American countries share very similar patterns of immigration, Brazil is certainly unique in the Americas, and indeed within the country itself there are wildly varying disparities, even between adjacent regions. When the colony of Brazil was founded by the Portuguese in the year 1500, it wasn't the hulking Goliath that we know it as today. Originally only a fraction of its current size, only taking up the area of South America east of the line approximately 45 degrees west of the prime meridian, as dictated by the Treaty of Tordesillas, meaning the oldest and longest surviving Portuguese settlements in the Americas are almost all in the northeast corner of Brazil. After quickly discovering the massive, inequitable terms of the treaty, the borders of Brazil were greatly expanded by the Portuguese, who, keep in mind, had always been vastly smaller in both area and population than their neighbor of Spain. Initially, the first migrants to the colony of Brazil were impoverished, criminals, or sailors who had deserted from their ships, and mass migration from Portugal didn't pick up for another 40 or 50 years, at which time more wealthy men began to arrive, occasionally bringing their families or African slaves with them. One major difference between the colonial populations of British America and those in Spanish and Portuguese America was that inter-ethnic relationships were extremely common in the latter two, and although there were scant cases of whites having children with natives or Africans and escaped slaves integrating with Amerindian tribes in British America, this was the exception rather than the rule. While in Brazil, where the majority of immigrants were single men, this was not necessarily frowned upon, and contrary to popular belief, the majority of inter-ethnic relationships were not from rape and were very often a result of marriage instead. And for this reason, the overwhelming majority of the Brazilian population has paternal Portuguese Portuguese ancestry. This was the beginning of the formation of the backbone of the Brazilian population, and the main reason for the extreme miscegenation throughout the country's history. In colonial Brazil, the mixed-race class that formed had a less concrete identity, rather than specifically being of Amerindian and European descent, such as the mestizos of Hispanic America, and mestizos, who are known as caboclos in Brazil, really had no qualms with intermarrying with the mulattoes or those of African and European descent, which created a new racial group known as the pardos, which simply means brown in Portuguese. Occasionally, Africans, Amerindians, or pardos would integrate into the European population as well, and vice versa, creating a rather fluid melting pot of races and cultures, although the Portuguese language and culture was dominant among all groups. By the time Brazil had gained independence and the first Brazilian census was taken, the population had a very even spread at 38% white, 
20% black, less than 1% Native American or Asian, and over 42% multiracial or parta. And it was around this time that immigration from the rest of the world exponentially grew, which completely changed the face of Brazil. European immigrants from outside of Portugal, mostly Italians, Spaniards, and the French, flocked to Brazil in large numbers, mostly along the coast and especially in the southeast, but throughout the generations their descendants spread throughout the country, and of course smaller numbers of Germans, Lebanese, and Japanese immigrants followed soon after. This is one of the main reasons for the north-south divide in the country of Brazil today, as those in the north are generally more racially mixed, being of mostly colonial era Portuguese, Amerindian, and African stock, while those in the south have more non-Portuguese European ancestry from these later migrants, as well as less non-European DNA altogether. However, the overwhelming majority of the Brazilian population has some degree of racial admixture. Because of Brazil's unique position on miscegenation, there have been dozens of genetic studies conducted on the Brazilian population controlling for self-identification, region, and even socio-economic position, which have compiled to get the most accurate picture of the Brazilian population and genome. According to the last Brazilian census in 2010, approximately 48% of Brazilians are white, although there is no category for Middle Eastern or Arab in the Brazilian census or housing survey, so most Arabs are simply counted as white, although some may identify as pardo instead. Around 7% are black, 44% are pardo, 1% are Asian, and that's specifically East Asian, and only around 0.4% are of Amerindian descent. Here's the kicker, the average self-identified white Brazilian is around 81.4% European, 8.3% Sub-Saharan African, and 10.3% Amerindian. And unfortunately, there was no subsection for Middle Eastern DNA in any of the studies online, so we're forced to assume that they were lumped together with the European gene pool. But most likely it would be around 1-4%, to and as stated earlier, whites in the South are more likely to hover around 90% European DNA, while it's slightly less for those in the North. Perhaps most shockingly, the average black Brazilian is only around 46.4% African, having nearly as much European DNA at 43.5% and about 10.1% Amerindian, meaning on average technically black Brazilians are more mulatto than African, although large disparities do exist by region. Asian immigrants from Japan and China haven't been in the country long enough to form an identifiable gene pool, however it can be assumed that there is an equally high proportion of non-East Asian DNA in the Asian Brazilian population, seeing how 27% of Asian Brazilians are mixed with another racial group. As for the Pardo racial group, around 62.2% of their genome is European, 25% is African, and 12.9% is Amerindian, which is not too far off from the white Brazilian population, and combining the entire genome for the country Brazil results in 66.8% European, 19.6% African, and 12.7% Amerindian. And if you were to separate this 66.8% European component into its various divisions, around 55% percent is of Portuguese origin, 21% is Italian, 12% Spanish, 8% German, and about 4% is of French, Slavic, or other European origin. In some areas of the country, literally the only thing separating the various racial groups is a couple of percentage points. For instance, in the northeast of the country, such as Bahia, with some of the most extensive history of migration and racial intermixing, it would not be uncommon for someone that is around 60 to 70 percent European DNA to identify as Bronco or white, while in southern Brazil, where African DNA is far less common, some self-identified Preto or black Brazilians may even have over 55 percent European DNA, although it's not like they could know this without having a DNA test. There really is no equivalence in current or historic U.S. American society where there's been much more rigid lines for racial identification. Now, in recent years, the number and percentage of white Brazilians has seemingly been depleting at an alarming rate, dropping from 54% in 2000 to only 48% today. However, using common sense and a variety of opinion polls, it's easy to see that the genetic composition of the country hasn't significantly changed in the past two decades, instead simply being a result of a change in racial identification, as many who previously checked off Bronco are now checking off Pardo. A very similar phenomenon occurs in the United States, where those who have one black parent and one white parent are far more likely to identify as the former rather than the latter, and this is even more true for those that are half Native American. Are there black people in Brazil that have very little European DNA? Yes. 
Are there white people in Brazil with virtually no non-European admixture? Of course, but these statistics we've compiled are merely aggregates and the reality is much more nuanced than what we can discuss in a single video. Officially, Brazil has a 